seguimos, seguimos con nuestro programón de lujo y el siguiente ponente de la tarde es Elena Jacoba, que nos va a hablar sobre la relación entre la documentación y los errores de software. La documentación, siempre hablamos de la documentación y se nos ponen a todos los pelos como escarpiados. Bienvenida, Elena. Welcome, Elena. I'm going to introduce you to our audience in Spanish. Elena trabaja como QA Engineer Senior en Deutsche Telekom IT Spain. Tiene una licenciatura en lingüística y la mayor parte de su vida ha trabajado como intérprete. Hace ya varios años decidió cambiar radicalmente su tipo de actividad y se sumergió de lleno en el mundo TI. En su día a día, Elena está enfocada no solo en el resultado, sino en la calidad del trabajo realizado, ¿no? como todos los que estamos hoy aquí. Dedica la mayor parte de su tiempo al autodesarrollo y al estudio de nuevas tecnologías. Durante toda su larga carrera, su amor por las pruebas no se ha desvanecido, sino que no ha hecho más que crecer. Para Elena, trabajar en un proyecto grande y complejo en una empresa tal como es Deutsche Telekom, le ha ayudado a desarrollarse como ingeniera de pruebas y le permite seguir aprendiendo muchísimo, muchísimo, muchísimo día a día. Como anécdota, Elena nos cuenta que siempre quiso aprender español cuando era intérprete. Pero realmente, está de verdad, aprendió el idioma cuando se vino a España para trabajar como ingeniera de Damos paso a la ponencia de Elena. Elena, we will give you way to your presentation. Documentation cockroaches versus software bugs. Welcome, Elena. Un segundito mientras avisamos a Elena para que active el audio, así la podéis escuchar. Y enseguida estamos de vuelta. <risa> Estas son las cosas maravillosas que nos pasan en directo y hacen que estemos todos despiertos. <risa> Vamos a ver si enseguida lo conseguimos. Bueno, mientras tanto, yo os cuento que eh, Elena habla poquito de español y va a hacer su ponencia en inglés. ¿Vale? Si tenéis alguna duda, también podéis hacérnoslo llegar a través de la sección de preguntas para que podamos hablar eh, y traducírselo para que luego os pueda responder eh, debidamente al finalizar la presentación. Y ahora enseguida resolvemos todas las dudas, todas las cuestiones técnicas. Si mientras tanto queréis aprovechar para preguntarnos alguna cosita, también vamos respondiendo. Esto es muy gracioso porque esto al final, si no nos pasa en un festival de test, ¿dónde nos tiene que pasar? Que sepáis que hemos hecho un montón de pruebas antes y teníamos a Elena en espera con nuestros técnicos de la plataforma que están ahí todo el día y aprovecho para saludar. Y ahí vemos con Elena, uno de nuestros compañeros de IT, que ha ido a echar un cable. Aquí nos movemos todos muy rápido. Hola, Pedro. Te vemos por ahí en pantalla. <ríe> y así estamos seleccionando. Ah, ya parece que escuchamos algo. A ver. No sé si me escucháis vosotros desde la sala. Yo creo que sí. <ríe> Perfecto, estamos listos. Gracias a todos los que estáis por ahí detrás en el backstage haciendo que estas cosas funcionen. Y gracias a la audiencia por vuestra paciencia. Ya estamos con, con Elena. Elena, we give you you can hear me. ¿Ya? Yeah? Ok, great. Let's start. Let's start. Uh, hola, buenas tardes. Uh, bienvenido al mundo de la documentación, cucarachas y packs. Uh, disculpe que va a presentar en inglés, uh, recién comienza a aprender español, pero como digo siempre, entiendo más que puedo decir. And now in English, as you have heard, uh, I'm Elena Agapova, uh, Senior Care Engineer at uh, Deutsche Telekom IT Spain. If you ask me where am I from, I can't answer this question because for about 20 years I have lived in Latvia. Then I moved uh, to Russia, St. Petersburg, and lived uh, there about uh, 10 years. Uh, a few years ago I moved to Estonia, and now since April 2023 I live here in Spain in Valencia. 
Sorry, I presented in English, but uh, maybe next time I will learn Spanish uh, normally and uh, can present in Spain, Spanish. Uh, okay, today I want to speak with you about the necessity of documentation for QS and visualization of the documentation. And in the final part of the presentation, I will share with you my experience of using ChatGPT for visualization. Let's start from the beginning. When the dinosaurs roamed the earth, there was no test engineering. Or maybe there was, but the dinosaurs just didn't know about it. Just joking. Now, seriously. First of all, I would like to speak with you uh, about common things, and actually about the role of documentation in Agile. I think uh, most of you know what is Agile and work according to this uh, methodology. Sorry, methodology. Uh, let's remember the fundamental principles of Agile. Not all, of course, <laughs> just those that are about documentation. Here's our. Uh, let's start individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Okay. Working software over comprehensive uh, documentation. Mm, okay. Understand. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Mm -hmm. Responding to change by following a plan. Okay, as you see, according to the manifesto, documentation is on the second role after software. That's really so. First of all, there aren't rules, but recommendations. The secondary, working software over comprehensive documentation is about documentation for customer. Actually, we have different users of documentation. At least we can define three groups, developers, COAS, and customer. And for every user, different type of documentation are needed. As I have already said, there is no need for final completed documentation during the development according to Agile. All needed information can be found in epics, stories, during discussions with POs, developers, etc. Maybe it is okay for developers. But does it really so? In the same way, does it really work in the same way for testers? For small features, Maybe, but if the big functional is prepared, it won't work properly. Let's see, there are different types of product testing. These are shown on this screen. These are just examples, there are more, but already according to this slide, you can see that information in the epic story or maybe in the draft use case can be enough only for the progression test. And I want to add that it is only if some small feature is developed. When, but when we need to, to define regression test scope, acceptance test scope, we as testers already need completed documentation because there is not enough information in epics, stories, when the big functional ready to be, to be, to get ready. You can, oh, sorry, <laughs> let's come back. Uh, you can suggest that a tester 
can discuss all open questions with POs, developers, and so on. Okay, this is great, but it takes time. Discussions with POs and developers can take too much time instead of starting the test execution as soon as possible. And if we talk about the bilateral test or end-to-end -end test, not only final use case is needed, but also at least an interface agreement. Because at this stage of testing, communication of different teams, systems is needed. And if the, the documentation won't be ready to this time, it will be quite difficult to define flow points as bug or feature. According to my personal experience, it is quite difficult to execute and analyze tests when some big functional is delivered. And this functional affects a lot of existing use cases. But, but if the documentation isn't ready until the integration or acceptance test is started, it's almost unreal to analyze test results properly. In this case, can occur invalid bugs. And developers need still need to analyze and spend their time for this bug. Also, the preparation of the test scope can have uh, some mistakes. Because without uh, normal documentation, it is hard to, to prepare the test scope properly and some information can be missed. And in the case when different stages of testing are done by different teams, there will be never-ending questions. All these invalid bugs and conversations spent more time than could be spent on the finalization of documentation. Okay. The incompleted uh, documentation is my pain during all my work. The more main point uh, that uh, I wanted to, to say is that uh, documentation is re re really very important for the testers on different stages of uh, the testing. And now let's go to the next chapter of the presentation, visualization. As soon as I came to my current project, uh, at that time as a junior test engineer, I saw a huge scope of documentation. Um, my current project is really big. And of course, there are a lot of use cases, interface agreements, system design documentation, but as soon as uh, I started to investigate the documentation, I recognized that uh, it is very difficult to understand the whole text with many if, 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 if. And uh, I started thinking that I missed some visual visualization. There are many types of uh, visualization that can be used in the documentation. The main of the tables, documentation maps, and blockchains. Let's start with tables. In case, there are a lot of parameters and characteristics. It is easier to use table to sort this information. Actually, many projects are using tables and uh, most of them are interactive. For example, when you have a lot of products and each of them has different types of characteristics, 
It is easier to type the characteristic that you already know to this table and find the needed scenario. Next one, documentation map. It is also common in use in many projects. It helps uh, to find dependency between a huge scope of use cases. A documentation map is necessary in big projects and also can be helpful in small projects. And the third one, my favorite, blockchain. Actually, it was the first that I have made when I came to the project. Uh, it is really hard to understand the whole text with many ifs. When you go, for example, to the 10th if, you already can forget what you have, were looking for. It is hard not only for the newcomers, but also for the experts. Uh, if uh, there is a blockchain in addition, I repeat, in addition to the use case, it is easier to recognize information. Also, it is easier to see the whole flow and find the needed part of the information. For example, when you are doing test execution and find some interesting point, you know it can be found somewhere in the special use case. You open it, you read it, you read the text. But if there is a blockchain, you can just go through this scenario and find what you're looking for. For example, I have this, yes, no, yes. I have this, yes, no, yes. In this case, you can be, you can uh, take this or this. Do you have it? No, hello, but. Look, in this case, you spent less time finding needed information and defining if it is bug or feature. Of course, the blockchain can be very big and also huge. Actually, the first uh, blockchain that I made was really big and complicated. And uh, uh, it was made in Excel. <laughs> Sorry, I was a uh, junior. Uh, I didn't knew about uh, any other tools. <laughs> And uh, when I saw it, I named it Cockroach. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe because all these uh, additional branches reminded me of the legs of cockroaches. But uh, so it is, I named it uh, Cockroach and uh, it lived uh, with me. But now I know uh, there are a lot of tools that can be used for creating a normal, readable blockchain. Also, it is possible to combine use cases in one blockchain. Okay, if you are afraid that uh, the blockchain will be very difficult, don't worry. With the help, for example, some drawing tools, it is possible to combine different blockchains and group them uh, using, for example, PLUS. So it is possible to define the main flow and when the, some special points is needed. And uh, for example, it is uh, described on a special, special stage it is possible to push plus and expand the needed stage. So, the visualization of the documentation is very useful. It makes it easier to read the use case with many exceptions. It is easier to search through the scenario during, during execution. And most important, it makes faster analysis 
of executed data and definition if it is bug or feature. But there are some minuses. The greatest one is time. It takes really a lot of time to make uh, one blockchain. And uh, a big question is uh, who will do it? Actually, if uh, testers have uh, final documentation, they also can do visualization. But uh, do they have additional time? Uh, you need uh, to analyze the document, find the main points, structurize it in diagram, and uh, also, after creating the blockchain, it won't live forever. If uh, the project is alive, it takes many of different types of changes during every sprint. So the created blockchain needs to be supported and updated every sprint. And now we are going to the final part of the presentation. As I have said, one of the biggest minuses of the blockchain is additional time span. Uh, as you know, neither business analysts nor testers don't have additional time to spend on the creation or support of big, complicated blockchain. Because of that, I started to search for some tool to make it faster and easier. For example, there are a lot of languages to create a blockchain. Actually, I know some languages. I know English, German, Latvian, Estonian. No, it's wrong. I need programming languages. Okay, even if I know some programming languages, I need. To, I still need time to analyze use case and define main points. So, what do you think? What modern future could be used in this case? Of course, it is ChatGPT. ChatGPT can't create a blockchain. It is chat. It can't visualize the information. But it can analyze and structurize given information. For example, if I ask ChatGPT to analyze a given text and give me main points and structurize it step by step, it can be done. So I ask ChatGPT to analyze and structurize the whole use case. And success, it is done. Actually, not perfect. It still needed uh, to be some, it still had uh, some uh, mistakes that should be corrected, but it is less work than do it from the beginning. After this, I still wanted to save more time. I don't want to create blockchain by myself. So, ChatGPT, give me, for example, mermaid code for this text. Yes, ChatGPT can do this. I can take this code, go to the, for example, this tool like uh, Drive.io and create needed blockchain. I said, ChatGPT, Give me a mermaid code for the sequence diagram of the use case. And here's the result. Chat GPT. Give me a mermaid code for flowchart for the use case. And here you go. It really saves a lot of time. Of course, it is still needed to be checked uh, 
to it still needed to, to check uh, analyze text and given code because uh, chat GPT don't give you a perfect code but uh, for example I can for my math code I can use uh, mermaid viewer I go with this code just copy past go with this code in mermaid viewer and uh, look okay here I have some mistake I corrected it go to try on hello my blockchain hello my favorite diagram it is still faster than creates a diagram from the beginning it really saves time so in conclusion yes visualization is really helpful it is really helpful part of documentation some projects use it often, some a minimum of it. But for the testers, and I think for developers as well, it is easier to understand the documentation that is visualized. It doesn't cancel the, the main documentation. However, using visualization in addition to the main documentation is very helpful. It also saves time for testers and developers as well during bug definition. Definition bug or feature is more visible to all members of the project. And ChatGPT can be very helpful for the creation of visualization. Of course, it still needs some support and correction, but it takes less time to correct information than to create it from the beginning. That's it. Thank you very much for your attention. And if there are any questions, I'm glad to answer them. Thank you very much, Elena, for sharing with us this technique to speed up bug certification. Personally, I hate cockroaches over any other bug in real life. Now I will share with you the questions that our attendees are sending us through the platform and from the auditoriums at its headquarters. Let's start with this one. In the blockchain, is the big and complicated. Won't it be harder to find needed information? Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? I haven't uh, heard normally. Okay, I repeat to you. Can you hear me properly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if the blockchain is very big and complicated, won't it be harder to find needed information? No, it won't be harder because uh, if you uh, use uh, some uh, drawing tools like Drive.io, you don't need to, to create a, a blockchain uh, that is very complicated. You can uh, use groups. You can group information. You can uh, create a main scenario and in uh, special points, where is uh, some exceptions, you can at group that is uh, named as plus and only when you push this plus you can see the other part of the blockchain so if uh, the blockchain is grouped uh, you can see main scenario and in needed place you can expand it okay thank you very much elena we will follow with the next question how often do you use visualization during your work? Every day. Uh, actually, I started to use it uh, when I came uh, to uh, my company. And uh, yes, uh, uh, first of all, when I uh, have done it, uh, I done it secretly, <laughs> just for me. But uh, then I shared it with colleagues, and not only me are, uh, is using uh, uh, visualization, but also my colleagues. It is really helpful. And now, uh, when I uh, 
explore chat GPT for these uh, needs. Uh, uh, we are uh, step by step uh, trying to create visualization in every documentation uh, that we have. Okay, thank you very much. If we don't have uh, much uh, answers, ask more questions, please. Um, I continue to uh, say goodbye to our guest, Elena. It has been a real pleasure having you with us today on this second day at VLF Testing 2023. See you very soon. Muchas gracias, Elena. Hasta muy pronto. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego.